Cranmore derives from uh, on Cranmore the big tree and um, when we moved into this estate there were trees all along the front of the estate and there was an, a, a boundary wall there dating back maybe 150 years that's still there and there was an awful lot of greenery in the estate you know and to us it was absolutely wonderful there was so much space Cranmore is one of the largest housing estates in the Northwest. It has a, the population of a small town. So there would be real concerns now at the moment by you know all of the new development. What is it going to mean? Are we going to be consulted? Are we going to have a say in it? Hey, this is Cranmore. It's going to be knocked down over the edge. We might as well show you it now before it's knocked down. There's a lot of memories here. Yeah, there's over about a hundred and something houses that were boarded up. People, families moved out that have lived here for generations. Gone. I think the most important thing about the regeneration programme, Wayne, is that the, the, those that are involved in it, in particular those that uh, are elected for the area, or those that do have access to, to government ministers, or people in Dublin that do make the, the decisions, that they take the points of view of the committee, of the residents, on board up to Dublin. As you can see, the Cooking streets food. have moved out, everybody's gone. Apart from one person, there's one house left. Some of the houses burnt down. Good so people lived here. There's a lot of graffiti going on as you can see, in the streets and stuff. So, I mean, walls ruined and houses obviously ruined here, homes burnt down. See, this, this is, is not the real Cranmore. The real Cranmore oh. has houses with no border windows, <laughs> people living in them, good people. Bulldozers moving in. I don't actually know how I, it's, I'm going to feel until, until it actually happens. I mean, we're five years down the road and I suppose we thought that everything was going to happen overnight and we realise now it's just going to take a lot of time. But it's important that uh, what we do in the future, and I would be very, very supportive, being involved in, in um, GA, being involved in soccer and being involved in sport generally, you know, rugby, whatever it is, basketball, these are the type of facilities that the young people uh, need in that area. And I think under the, the regeneration uh, of Cranmore, this is a major, I believe, a major um, facility and it's an area that we're going to get funding through under the Cranmore regeneration in consultation with also funding through sports and recreation in, in also with uh, other fundings from the Gateway Innovation. It's vitally important that the money is spent and when the money is spent, that is spent on our youth, first of all, that is spent on recreational and sporting uh, activities for, for our young people. Because there's not much to do in here. We have, we have a pitch at the bottom of Cranmore that we're not allowed into. We'll probably get arrested if we were on it. A pitch there in Gedloff Drive that we're not allowed to use either. And even when we do have matches and stuff like that, we have to wait until the last minute before we get on it. Like. It'd be a sad day. I wouldn't like to see it now. So even I was over there today and I was seeing the house. I just said to the, the designated guy, why did you open the house? I said, give me some on them or some of the boys. Because it seems an awful waste, doesn't it? Good houses. Yeah, the houses are only 32 or 33 years old. But of course, they're all, they're all cleaned out now. It cost too much to revamp them again now, anyway. You really could make nothing of them. So maybe the plan, from what I heard today, you know, is, it seems to be quite good. But it'd be sad. The neighbours up there now, Kathleen Scanlon, they were out today. To how the missus and there were no neighbours to chat. And you know, you always had the neighbours like the, like the old days. That's all finished. They just hop in their cars, do a bit of time of day and they're gone. We were the first lot of houses in the Cranmore area. There was no houses over here when we came over. There was only, um, there was a spinning factory. But there was, there was one house on, on the Cranmore Road. It was. I think there was a brother and sister living, but there was no houses. We were the first lot of houses. There was 38 in our, in our estate when we came. The houses, I, I, you see, there was too many houses anyway. But when I look at the centre, I was in the centre of the night of the meeting, and I said, oh, God, if this is going to go, like, it's, very, it's a good centre and it's very well kept. Could they not put an extension, a big hall, onto the football pitch? 
and put on the extra rules that they needed and leave the centre as it is. You know, that's, there was a few of us talking, like, that was on the old committee, and we were saying, like, it's a sin to see the centre going. But if it has to go, it has to go. Like, it's, you know, you have to get, get on and let the youngsters get on with their whatever they think is better for them, you know. Young people need to have their own space. They need to have somewhere where they can go informally, somewhere where they can hang out, chat, where there's no adults kind of looking over their shoulders and saying, Wayne, what are you doing in here, blah, blah, blah. Because that's the biggest problem I think most teenagers have is, where do you go? You either go off DOS down the town or you hang around the streets or you go around to your mate's house and you play the PS3 or whatever. And there's some new houses up here as well. Here's is the Rose Rose house. Um, go here after school, homework, club, stuff like that. Bring you away surf and all that stuff. It's a good place, like. Hi there, it's B-Boy Time here. I'm in uh, Sligo today, um, teaching all the kids uh, some moves and stuff. Um, I'm a break dancer, a B-Boy. Um, I work with Funk Stylers UK Dance Company, and I represent with a, an Irish B-Boy crew called Bad, Day, Bad Taste Crew from Omar. But yeah, just uh, living, living the life of a b-boy really, um, doing workshops like this, trying to get kids involved with dance and uh, just positive things in general, um, other than just drinking and going out causing problems. I don't know if uh, you have those kind of things, like it, the situation in London with lots of stabbings and stuff, so it's, uh, it's a big responsibility for people of my kind of age who've, who've come through that environment and uh, just don't, don't really want uh, other kids to go through all that craziness and you've got something as beautiful as dance in your life and it's free and you can do it anywhere so everyone should dance in their life in my opinion. Peace. I'm sure most of you know that Tony has lived, lived in Cranwell for how many years? 32. 32 years, and he's recently moved. And what we found out the other night is the children call him Tony the Legend. <laughs> <laughs> When the centre block it was decided it was going to be knocked and that I felt that people were getting a good deal for their house, for their homes, I didn't think of the social aspect of it. Like people that have reared their kids there, that they have been there all their lives. You know, they were moving to new, a new part of town, new neighbours, building up the communities again. I mean, Cranmore has one of the most brilliant community spirit and I don't think that any other communities have the same kind of spirit as what we have. So the social implications for people moving, I'd say it hit me greatly. To see our children from Cranmore to get more confident in themselves and realise that we're just as good as other people from other areas. Just because we don't live in a private estate or in a so-called right side of the town doesn't mean that we're not as good as everybody else. My Cranmore, my place, uh, people the people are what makes Cranmore if you want it in, in in three words I would say the people the energy and the goodwill because it's all here the goodwill of people with the dark and the roving light and here I am lying sleeping on the deck and for her sweet sake I shall die and here I